this short tutorial video in the series of performing a statistical simulation in ADS focuses on sensitivity histogram and yield optimization analysis in ADS. Performing yield analysis and Monte Carlo analysis gives us indication whether there is a problem in the circuit being designed because of the statistical nature of the tolerances varied. However, these simulations do not tell us which are the components which are causing the problems of poor yield or low manufacturability. In order to get more insight about the root cause of the problems and what we need to do in order to get a high yield from the circuit being designed, we have a nice feature in ADS called sensitivity histograms. If we go back to the same uh, directory of Optimistat and DOE, we can notice there is a component called sensitivity analysis. We can place this component on a schematic and while we do double click and try to understand the syntax this function is asking for, we can always click on help file which brings out the sensitivity histogram syntax and we can see the number of arguments which needs to be passed in order to use this function. If we further scroll down, documentation of ADS also gives an idea of how to write this equation for a particular um, component. In this present example case, we are trying to do sensitivity histogram on dB value of S11 for a variable which is denoted by C1V design and the target for S11 is to achieve better than 18 dB return loss in the frequency range of 200 to 400. We can simply copy paste this equation from here and we can go back to our design whereby we can copy paste the equation there. And we can modify these equation as may be needed for our circuit based on the variables. So in this design we have five variables, three for inductors and two capacitors as noted here. I have done that already and the two sub blocks placed here as a sub circuit allows us to do sensitivity histogram on S21 as well as S11. If we go inside S21 block, we can notice there are five histograms written. So we can zoom into one of them and see the syntax. So here I have written histogram to check yield problems around S21 response with the value of L1. And the target which we are trying to achieve is better than minus 40 dB rejection in the frequency range of 250 to 500 megahertz. Similarly, for all component values, I have set a one sensitivity histogram so that we can see how S21 rejection is getting affected because of the specific tolerances in these individual components. Similarly, the goals for S11 has been set whereby we are checking to the level of minus 15 between the frequency range of 1 megahertz and 80 megahertz. While we perform the simulation using the same example as we have used in the past, we can run this simulation and observe the yield, uh, current yield of our circuit. In order to meet the three yield specification goal, we can see we have yield of around 51% or 50%. And by close inspection, to these graphs here we can notice there are quite a few circuits which are above minus 40 dB on 250 megahertz onwards. So this is causing one yield failure. Another cause of yield failure is because the S11 responses are getting poorer than this minus 15 dB line and we have quite a few violations happening in S11. To plot the sensitivity histogram we can insert this rectangular plot on the graph and we can select the required sensitivity expression as we have noted. We have already done that and if I switch to another page of this data display, I have sensitivity histogram for S21 and corresponding component name is also displayed. By looking at S21 histograms, we can see all the components pointing to a direction which gives us a feeling the values of these components are not centered properly. If you zoom into one or two of these graphs and try to take a close look, for C1, we are here in our nominal 
43 picofarad and we can see the yield is increasing as we increase the value of capacitor and the yield is dropping while we switch to the lower side of this capacitor. Now this tells us a pretty clear picture the values of the components are not aligned properly. Now having a look at this graph we can cl cleanly expect that if we shift the value of capacitors to around 48 picofarad and for L1 if we move around somewhere closer to 90 or 95 nanohenries for L2 we switch to around 160 nanohenry and if you switch for L3 around 80 or 85 nanohenry we are uh, probably getting more uh, better results. So if I open another design where I have done that by modifying these values so if we go and look at the values which I modify here I shifted the value of L1 to 83, L2 to around 173, L3 to 88 C1 and C2 to be 48. So this is pretty much in accordance to what was predicted by our histogram of sensitivity on S21. With these change values, if we run the simulations, we can observe the yield expected from the circuit has gone up to 77% from around 51%. And if you look at the graph of S21, all the traces because of statistical variations are well below minus 40 dB line as we assumed for. The S11 is still crossing minus 51 because we haven't looked at S11 histograms. Now let us change our page of data display and have a look at histogram of S21. One can see is all immune to the component tolerances which is a good news for us. If you look at histogram of S11 we can clearly see there are still some components which are causing S11 to fail. So as we can see from C1, it's kind of flat. It's not really making any impact on the filter response. If we look at L1, it shows that in outer ranges of the tolerance range, it starts affecting yields quite significantly. And L2 being the most significant, outside certain range, the yield is completely dropping to zero. And this is not a good sign for us. In order to gain a little more insight on some of these component value shifting, we can continue to try using the manual method. But one of the nice way in ADS in order to perform some of these design centering or statistically centering the circuit performance uh, to achieve the required uh, specifications, we can simply rely on yield optimization feature. So we can select this yield optimization controller from the library and place it on a schematic. We can double click on it and we can set the number of iterations to be 50. And in order to let ADS yield optimizer center our design, we need to make these component values as optimizable. There is a video on optimization which quickly tells you how to define values as optimizable by going to simulation variable setup and we can go to optimization tab and select the values which we want to use in optimization. Because my circuit is already optimized, I don't need to stretch too far in order to change these values. Hence, the default ranges, which is plus minus 50% of the nominal value should be sufficient. So we can keep on selecting that. And once we are done, we can launch a simulation which will be taken over by yield optimization. And our circuit will be optimized in order to center our component values in order to achieve maximum yield coming out of this RF circuit. Please note this yield optimization may take a longer time. It depends on the time taken by each statistical simulations. There's a multiple statistical simulation running in the background. So now our 50 iterations have been completed. And as can be seen from 71% or 75%, we have jumped the yield to 85%. So yield optimization has helped us centering our component values in order to achieve the good yield. Now this is pretty respectable result and in order to update these optimized values we can go to simulate simulate update the optimization values which changes the component values to be statistically centered as achieved in optimization so we can see now the values are nicely centered to be statistically uh, robust circuit design 
we can disable this yield optimizer now and we can run a normal statistical simulation and let's have a look at the histogram of S11. So this is the histogram for S21 and once we go to S11 histogram we can notice the value the performance of L2 is now much better which was not so good in the last exercise. But having said that we still notice some problems and we can make out from these histograms that if we had to achieve even higher yield than 85% if 85% is not acceptable we need to reduce the tolerance ranges in inductor circuits. So let's give it a try. We can come back to the circuit and we can go to variable setup and statistics tab. For inductors uh, L1, L2 instead of 10% if you use plus minus 5% we can check how much change that is going to bring to your yield. Before we go there let's see how much yield are we getting so that we, we can compare. So right now our yield in current process is around 86%. If we reduce the inductor tolerances of L1 and L2 inductors to 5% and we run the design centered analysis we can see yield is reaching a fabulous number of 98.8% which is acceptable in any kind of manufacturing environment. So hopefully this gives designers an idea how to statistically design the circuits, the usage of histogram, yield analysis and yield optimization in areas which are really great features. Do contact Agilent Technical Support if you need more information on some of these simulations. Have a nice day and good luck with your designs.